Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Doulos. I'm going to describe what's new with VHDL. So let's start off by looking at the VHDL timeline. When I say VHDL, right now I mean IEEE standard 1076 2008. VHDL was last standardised back in 2008. That standard was actually published in January of 2009. Now, those of you who have been following the VHDL story will know that the EDA vendors not, have not been exactly falling over themselves to implement the HDL 2008. So as of today, which is April 2011, we've so far seen simulator support from Oldec and more recently from Mentor. And it's really the simulator support from these two vendors that have prompted me to look at the VHDL 2008 again. So I've gone away and played with it a little bit. I'm going to share some of my findings with you. If you want a comprehensive list of features from the HDL 2008, then there's a reference here to the Doodles website you can go and look at, or simply Google the HDL 2008, and you'll find references to websites and books on the subject. In this brief video, I'm really going to focus on some of the more useful and practical features of the HDL 2008 that run right now with simulators from Aldec and from Mentor, and possibly from others, but those are the two that I've played with recently. So let's start off with an example of a combinational process that was actually taken from a Doulos training course. If any of you have attended Doulos VHDL training, you might recognise this example. It's a combinational circuit that takes in two numbers, x and y, and calculates either their minimum or their maximum value, depending on another input, min0, max1. So I'm going to use this as an example to start illustrating some features from VHDL 2008. Let's start with that sensitivity list at the top. So in VHDL, when you write a sensitivity list, either in a weight statement or a process, you have to explicitly list all of the signals that the process is sensitive to. So first new feature of VHDL 2008 is that you can simply use the keyword all in a sensitivity list. And what all does is to analyse the process and build a sensitivity list from every signal that's mentioned in that process, which is a really useful way of building a process for describing combinational logic. Now moving on to the next statement inside the process, the if statement. We start off by saying if min max equals 1, then. So many of you will recognise the issue in, in VHDL that when you're writing expressions using the type standard logic, you've got to very explicitly compare standard logic values with zeros, ones, x's and so on in order to build Boolean values for use in constructs like if statements. So VHDL 2008 supports a so-called condition operator, and what the condition operator does is to convert bit and standard logic values to the type Boolean so that they can be used in conditions. And the really neat thing is that in most common circumstances, that condition operator can be called implicitly, so-called implicit condition operator, and that's what I'm illustrating here. So on the line labeled new, you can see VHDL 2008 code. We can simply write if min 0 max 1 then, where min 0 max 1 is a signal or variable of type standard logic. Really useful. So here you can see the new style process, process all, if min 0 max 1 then, and then we dive into some other code. Now what I want to do is to show you an alternative way of writing the if statement shown here. So what we would do in VHDL maybe is to comment it out. And you know that if you want to com comment out a chunk of code in VHDL, well, VHDL traditionally only has single line comments. So you either got to get typing dash dash in front of all the lines you want to comment out, or maybe use a clever text editor. So VHDL 2008 now supports block comments. And the syntax of, of block comments has been borrowed directly from C and C++. So you can see illustrated here a block comment commenting out this, these five lines of code. So instead of the if statement, I'm going to introduce another new feature from VHDL 2008. There are some new standard functions, maximum and minimum. So maximum and minimum are defined on standard types like integers and standard logic vectors, all the types that you're likely to want to use them on. And it just so happens that this example that I've chosen requires a maximum and minimum function. So we can call maximum and minimum instead of writing the if statement. Turns out maximum and minimum each take two arguments, so you'd have to nest them if you wanted to find the maximum and minimum of more, more than two quantities. 
So, summary so far. We can write process all in order to build an implicit combinational sensitivity list. We don't have to explicitly test equals zero and equals one when we're testing standard logic values. And there's a couple of new built-in fu functions, maximum and minimum. Now let's have a look at a synchronous process describing a counter as opposed to a combinational process. So here's a typical synchronous process describing a synchronous binary counter. Let's see what we can do to improve this using VHDL 2008. Well, we can use our implicit conversion operators in order to get rid of all of those equals ones, reducing the volume of the code a little bit using this implicit condition operator. Then we can take a look at the nested if statement and rewrite it using another innovation in VHDL 2008, the matching case statement. So here's the nested ifs rewritten using a matching case statement. Syntax of matching case is the keyword case followed by a question mark. And in the matching case statement, you can use the don't care value of type standard logic written as a dash as a pattern matching construct. So here we're building the expression at the top of the case statement by building an aggregate from these three scalar signals, enable, load and up, down. We've had to use a qualified expression in order to make the type of those three signals unambiguous. We've created a, a three-bit standard logic vector type for that purpose. And then within the case statement, we're matching the values of enable, load and up, down against the three bits that we expect write as strings, and any dash means don't care. So count is going to be loaded with the value of data when enable is one and load is one, regardless of the value of up down. And if you write a matching case statement, don't forget to terminate the case statement with end case question mark at the end. Now let's have a look at a test bench, going back to the min max circuit as the example. So here's a test bench, again taken from an example of one of our training classes. So the process inside the test bench is generating directed test vectors to test this min-max circuit. So it makes some assignments to some signals, waits for some time, makes some more assignments and so on. A very straightforward piece of straight line code, but it does tend to get rather verbose as you repeat the same block of code again and again and again. So sometimes people try to make this a little bit more readable just by using tabular formatting. So we could line up all of our signal assignments on a horizontal line just to make the assignments a little bit more readable. However, that's not really particularly elegant and it would be much nicer if we could assign all of the signals in the min zero, max one, x and y in a single assignment. Well, you could try to do that in VHDL, but you run into problems due to some inflexibility with the aggregate in VHDL. And that situation is much improved in VHDL 2008 because now we can include slice names within aggregates. So have a look at this code. Here on the left hand side of each of our signal assignments we've built up an aggregate by aggregating together all of the signals that we want to assign. And then on the right hand side of the assignment we've built up a long vector that we can use to assign values to those signals. Now this may look like familiar VHDL code, but it turns out it wouldn't work prior to VHDL 2008 because the values that we're using to build up this aggregate are actually a mixture of scalar values and vector values. Min zero, max one is a scalar standard logic value. X, Y and expect Z are each vectors. So what we're trying to do in effect is to build up an aggregate from a mixture of scalars and vectors in other words, we're taking both scalar values and slice names to build up our aggregate. And in VHDL 2008, you can do exactly that as shown here. In this case, using positional association to build the aggregate. Perhaps it's a little bit clearer if we write it, rewrite this using named association. So just to help you understand what's going on here, I've rewritten that same aggregate using named association. So here on the left-hand side of the assignment, you can see an aggregate built up by using name. So element zero of the aggregate is associated with min zero max one. Then a slice one to four is associated with vector x. And this is the new thing. Prior to VHDL 2008, you could have written one to four arrow within an aggregate, but what would happen there is that x would have to be a scalar, and that same scalar value would be associated with each of the individual elements. 
Well, what we're do doing now is grouping together elements, one to four, five to eight, and so on, and associating that group of elements, or slice, with a vector, which is exactly what we want in this case. And that's neat. Now coming on to the right-hand side of the assignment, so far we've just got a dumb vector, a row of zeros. It would be much nicer if we could actually write this vector in hex. The trouble is we've got a vector of 13 elements, and prior to VHDL 2008, if you want to write a vector in hex, then the number of bits in that vector has got to be an exact multiple of 4. Well, it doesn't need to be any more because now bit string literals have been enhanced, so that we can use explicit bit widths when building the values of bit string literals. So on the right hand side here now you can see 13x and then a string of hex characters. And now the hex characters don't have to be a multiple of 4 bits wide. In fact we can build up a string that's an odd number of bits wide, 13 bits wide in this case, which makes the code a lot more readable. Elsewhere in our test bench we might want to write out the values of some things that are going on in the design under test. VHL 2008 has a very nice innovation for doing that, which is to use the same kind of hierarchical names that have been found for many, many years in the Verilog and System Verilog languages. In VHDL, those are called external names, and you can see one here. So an external name allows you to dive off somewhere else in the VHDL design hierarchy and peek or poke a value of a signal or a variable. So in this case, we've got an external signal name. We're referring to the signal Z in the instance UUT. So UUT in this case is a label or an instance name on a component instance. Because this is VHDL and we've got strong checking in the compiler, we've got to do a little bit of typing to construct this external name. So as well as just writing UUT.Z, as you might do in Verilog, we also have to indicate that we're making a reference to a signal. It's a type standard logic vector. And then you enclose the whole thing in these two double angle brackets. OK, so what we're trying to do in the test bench is to write out the value of the signal buried inside the duct. So we've got a VHDL report statement, and inside this report statement we're building a string, concatenating the string Z equals with the value of the signal. Because we're going to run into trouble here because the signal isn't a string, the signal is a standard logic vector. So we're actually going to have to do some sort of conversion between our standard logic vector and the type string. And this is something that can be very annoying in VHDL, as you'll know. Simple conversions can be surprisingly awkward to do. Well, things have got a lot better in VHDL 2008 because there's a lot more standard functions at our fingertips. In particular, the function toString is now predefined and built in for most of the data types that you're likely to want to use it on. So we can simply call toString of this external signal name to convert the value from type standard logic vector to type string that we can then concatenate with the string literal to build up the complete report statement. So now we've got a process which forms an infinite loop. It will fire every 10 nanoseconds and dump out the value of a signal inside our duct. So this is an infinite loop. How are we going to stop simulation? Well, VHDL 2008 gives us a very neat way of stopping simulation by means of the standard environment package. This is a new package added to VHDL 2008 that gives you access to a few very simple simulator control functions. In particular, we've now got functions to explicitly pause and abort simulation. So the pause function is called stop, and the abort function is given the name finish. Some of you might recognise the names stop and finish, which are actually borrowed from Verilog. And each of those are in the built-in package ENV within um, standard. So, I've illustrated some of the most practical and useful features of VHDL 2008 that work now with some of the current simulators. If you want to know any more about VHDL 2008, well, of course, we can offer you training classes in VHDL, Verilog, System Verilog, Embedded Software, ARM, and a range of other subjects shown here. If you want more information, then do visit our website, www.dulos.com.